even with uh, kind of thermal technique and space to uh, form of the team. I think that's the major problem because uh, especially kids from high school and their parents, they, they love to have uh, walking distance uh, spaces for, for these kids to uh, play with. And uh, I think that's a major problem of it. Because uh, uh, with people have transportation, they, they can go that far. But with, with uh, those kids, they don't have transportation to uh, go that far to, uh, to choose a team to play with. I think that's a major problem. Of it. It's probably going to be a problem that's not going to change overnight. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have to think a bit laterally about what you're going to do. I mean, you've only got to, got to go to Fiji uh, to see you don't need a proper rugby pitch to play some rugby on. Why out of Nandy Airport and you'll see him in a field that's 20 foot or 14 foot and I'll be playing rugby. So, well, one thing, just, well, I don't want to talk too much because I want this to be your form, but, but let me just tell you what the GIR does. GIR is, is not rugby as you know. It's non-contact, it's tag, you can play touch as well. It promotes the values and, and that the chairman has, has mentioned earlier on and, and about nutrition and, and health has health implications, etc. because the kids are exercising. It has a knock-on effect to mum and dad because they see what the kids are getting up to. It's non-contact for boys and girls and it can remain non-contact for boys and girls. Yes, yeah. The boys and girls can play together in, in non-contact rugby to their 70 if they want to. Okay? Mixed teams. When you get into contact rugby, anywhere past the age of 13, the World Rugby's directive is that there's separate boys and separate girls for obvious reasons. So this these group dynamics between boys and girls, it may well be that in some instances you do have separate boys teams and girls teams. You can do that if you want it. It's very mix and match. Um, but at the end of the, uh, the program uh, that runs in the school, you can then have you then have a festival. And the festival brings in all the kids that are in the school who have been playing in those teams. And it's a half day or a day long festival. <laughs> Most, and Monique knows about this, I'm preaching to the converted with Monique because she's been trained up in it, just to give you guys and girls some idea. Uh, the, the festival then, at the end of the program, uh, all the kids in the school, or maybe you bring a couple of schools together to play for a day, and they play seven aside, etc. cetera, but it's tag or touch. Uh, and you bring in non-government organisations to assist with the, the programs and the mums and the dads and the grandfathers and the grandmothers all come in, I can assure you, to watch their grandkids and their daughters play this form of rugby, not proper rugby, it's a form of rugby, non-contact for the day. And then you bring in your non-government organisations and your government organisations to help support the day. So there might be uh, an education unit there that's, that's doing stuff in the preschool. There might be um, as we've done in Samoa, uh, breast cancer. They come in and they have, have uh, a stall set up and they hand out stuff, pamphlets on, on breast cancer. Uh, diabetes, the Diabetes Association comes in. Um, the Violence Against Women organisation comes in. The AIDS organisation comes in. So it's a community thing where various things that, that affect your community here can be promoted for the best the best outcomes. That doesn't that uh, doesn't solve the problem that we haven't got lots of pictures and fields. But when these guys, when the executive uh, in, in the media planning this participation program, there's some of the things that they can start to mould in. Maybe even you've got to bust the kids into the ground for a, uh, a Saturday or a Friday afternoon. Those things can can be done. So, more than one way to skin a cat. But yeah, great, great idea about, about 